applicants for the Moderna pediatric trial is complete. What are the latest developments you can tell us about that? Yeah, so after we announced that we were going to participate in the phase three trial for the Moderna vaccine in pediatrics, there was significant interest. We had over a thousand families contact us saying that they would like to enter their children in these trials. Uh, you know, Moderna is only going to enroll 4,000, so not all 1,000 of those will be selected, but we are contacted people directly now uh, as Moderna gives us the go ahead to enroll people. So over the next several weeks, we'll be enrolling people in this phase three trial. You know, ultimately, we'd like to see results by the end of the year. Uh, for Moderna, it might be a little bit later than that, but everyone's working as quickly as they can to get answers around these vaccines for kids. And just really quickly, as a reminder for some families, the doses for these children is not the same as adult doses, of course. Right. So these uh, doses can be different based on their size. And that's part of the reason that these pediatric trials can take a little bit longer uh, is we need to assess how well those doses work, you know, too much, too little. Uh, and, uh, you know, make sure they have a good immune response so they're protected against COVID-19. And as well as, you know, the rest of the country, as we're dealing with this Delta variant, the Biden administration is planning to administer some booster shots to healthcare workers and no nursing homes. You know, what's your opinion on, on boosters as well? Yeah, I think we still need to see a little bit more data, but you know what we are starting to see, especially out of Israel, who's a little bit ahead of us in their immunization program, uh, and they have the ability to collect good data, uh, is after maybe that eight month mark, that immunity starts to wane. Now, we still have great protection against severe disease, great protection against death, uh, and it's this debate between do we give booster shots to prevent spread of the disease in the US with breakthrough cases or mild symptoms, or do we really get those doses to other parts of the world that need their first dose so they're not at risk for severe disease uh, or, or death. So I think we'll see that play out over the next couple of weeks. And of course, I don't want to talk about the winter months, but they are among us. And we do have to talk about the winter surge, you know, of those cases when we are experiencing perhaps a couple more cold symptoms and things like that, right? Where before we were kind of close to canceling elective surgeries, procedures, you know, if, if we don't take care of this now, could we potentially see that happening in those winter months ahead of us? You know, I'd say it's not off the table yet. You know, right now, COVID cases in Wisconsin are up. Hospitalizations are up. Uh, now, specifically here at UW Health, we have more patients, but we've been able to manage them within our standard footprint. Uh, if we continue to see escalations in cases, that's something we'll need to discuss as to, you know, can we take care of all of the COVID patients without canceling other healthcare needs in the community? So fingers crossed, we're not there yet, uh, but we do need people to get out there and get vaccinated so that we don't have to cross that bridge. And really all across the country, we've seen these um, individuals who are in COVID hospitalized are not vaccinated. Is that kind of the same thing that is happening here still in the state of Wisconsin? Yeah, you know, we're the same as the rest of the country. You know, COVID is really a disease of the unvaccinated at this point, but there are so many folks who are unvaccinated that it's a real threat uh, to our healthcare systems. All right, Dr. Jeffrey Potoff there joining us live. Thank you so much. And we'll continue checking in with you.